reading to the Bible in a year. November 15th, 1 Chronicles chapters 5 through 6, Hebrews 10, Amos 4, and Psalms 148 through 150. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn because he pro- sorry, but because he profaned his father's bed, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, so that he is not recorded in the genealogy according to the birthright. Though Judah prevailed over his brothers, and from him came the ruler, yet the birthright belonged to Joseph. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Hanok and Palu, Hezron and Carmi, or Carmi. The sons of Joel were uh, Shemaiah, his son, Gog, his son, Shimei, or Shimei, his son, Micah, his son, Reiah, his son, Baal, his son, Bera, his son, whom tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, took away into exile. He was the leader of the Reubenites. His relatives by their families in the genealogy of their generations were Jael, the chief, then Zechariah, and Bela, the son of Azaz, uh, the son of Shema, the son of Joel, who lived in Aurora, even to Nebo and Baalmeon. To the east, he lived as far as the entrance of the wilderness from the river Euphrates, because their cattle had increased in the land of Gilead. In the days of Saul, they made war with the Hagrites, and they fell by their hand. So they lived in their tents and throughout all the land of the all the land east of Gilead. Now, the sons of Gad lived opposite them in the land of Bashan, as far as Selica. Joel was the chief, and Shaphan, uh, say, excuse me, Shaphum the second, then Janai and Shaphat in Bashan. The relatives of the father of their father's households were Michael, Meshulam, Sheba, Jorai, Jachin, Zia, and Eber. Seven. These were the sons of Abihail, uh, the son of Huri, the son of Jorah. Uh, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Jeshishai, the son of Jahado, rather, Jado, the son of Booz, Ahi, the son of Abdiel, the son of Guni, was the head of their father's households. They lived in Gilead, in Bashan, and in their towns, and in the pasture lands of Sharon, as far as their borders. All of these were recorded in the genealogies in the days of Jotham, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, king of Israel. The sons of Reuben and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, consisting of men of valor, men who bore the shield and sword and shot with bow, and were learned in many ways of battle, were 44,760 who went out for military duty. They made war against the Hagrites, Jatur, Nafish, and, and, and Nodab. They were helped against them. And the Hagrites and all who were with them were given into their hand, for they cried out to God in the battle, and he was moved by their entreaty, because they trusted in him. They took captive their cattle, their 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep, 2,000 donkeys, and 100,000 men. For many fell slain, because the war was of God, and they lived in their place until the exile. Now, the sons of the half-tribe of Manasseh lived in the land, from Bashan to Baal, ha- to Baal Hermon, and Sinair and Mount Hermon, and they were numerous. These were the heads of their father's households, even Eper, brother Eper. Having one of these days where just pronouncing simple things is hard? Let's roll with it. Even Epher, Ishi, Eliel, Azrael, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Jadiel. Mighty men of valor, men of renown, heads of their father's household. But they acted unfaithfully against the God of their fathers, and played the harlot after the gods of the peoples of the land, whom God had destroyed before them. So the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, king of Assyria, even the spirit of Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria. And he took them away into exile, namely the Reubenites, the Gadites, the half-tribe Manasseh, and brought them to Hala, Habor, Hara, and to the river Gozen, the river of Gozen, to this day. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari, or Merari. The sons of Kohath were Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. The children of Amram were Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. 
And the sons of Aram were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Eleazar became the father of Phinehas, and Phinehas the father of Abishua. And Abishua became the father of Buki, and Buki became the father of Uzi. And Uzi became the father of Jerahiah, rather, Zerahiah. And Zerahiah became the father of Marioth. Marioth became the father of Amariah, and Amariah became the father of Ahitub. Ahitub became the father of Zadok, and Zadok became the father of Ahimaaz. Ahimaaz became the father of Azariah, and Azariah became the father of Johanan. Johanan became the father of, of Azariah, who was ministered, rather, it was he who ministered as the priest in the house of Solomon, which he built in Jerusalem. And Azariah became the father of Amariah, and Amariah became the father of Ahitub, and Ahitub became the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Shalom. Shalom became the father of Hilkiah, and Hilkiah became the father of Azariah. And Azariah became the father of Sariah, and Sariah became the father of Jehozadak. And Jehozala, Je, rather, Jehozadak went along when Yahweh took Judah and Jerusalem away into exile by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. The sons of Levi were Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. These are the names of the sons of Gershom, Libni, and Shimei, or Shimei. The sons of Kohath were Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. The sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi. These are the families of the Levites according to their father's households. Of Gershom, Libni his son, Jehath his son, Zima his son, Joah his son, Ido his son, Zerah his son, uh, Jerry, rather, Jeatharai his son. The sons of Kohath were Aminadab his son, Korah his son, Asir his son, Elkanah his son, Eph, uh, Ebiasaph his son, and Asir his son, Tahath his son, Uriel his son, Uzziah his son, and Shaul his son. The sons of Elkanah were Amasai and Ahamath. As for Elkanah, the sons of Elkanah were Zophai, uh, his son, and Nahath, his son, Eliab, his son, Jehoram, his son, rather, Joram, his son, Elkanah, his son. The sons of Samuel uh, were Joel, the firstborn, and Abijah, the, uh, the second. The sons of Merari were Mali, Libni, his son, Shimei, or Shimei, his son, Uzziah, Uzzah, his son. Shimea his son, Haggaiah his son, Isaiah his son. Now these are those whom David bore, whom David bore. These are those whom David caused to stand over the service of the uh, song in the house of Yahweh, after the ark rested there. And they ministered with song before the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, until Solomon had built the house of Yahweh in Jerusalem. And they stood for their service according to their custom. These are, are those who stood for service with their sons. From the sons of the Kohathites was Haman, the singer, son of Joel, son of Samuel, son of Elkanah, son of Joram, the son of Eliel, the son of Toa, the son of Zuth, the son of Elkanah, the son of Mahath, the son of Amasai, the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah, the son of Tahath, the son of Asir, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. Haman's brother, Asaph, stood at his right hand. Even Asaph, the son of Barakiah, the son of Shimea, the son of Michael, the son of Baseah, sorry, Baaseah, the son of Malchijah, the son of Ethni, the son of Zerah, the son of Adiah, the son of Ethan, the son of Zima, the son of Shimei, or Shimei, the son of Jehoth, the son of Gershom, the son of Levi. On the left hand were the relatives of the sons of Morari. Ethan, the son of Kishi, the son of Abdi, the son of Maluk, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Amaziah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Amzi, the son of Bani, the son of Shamer, the son of Mali, the son of Mushi, the son of Merari, the son of Levi. Their relatives, the Levites, were given over unto all the service of the tabernacle of the house of God. But Aaron and his sons offered offerings up in smoke on the altar of burnt offering and on the altar of incense. For all the work of the Holy of Holies, to make atonement for Israel, according to all that Moses, the servant of God, had commanded. These are the sons of Aaron, Eleazar his son, Phinehas his son, Abishua his son, Buki his son, Uzi his son, Zerahiah his son, Marioth his son, Amariah his son, Ahitub his son, Zadok his son, Ahimaz his son. Now, these are their settlements according to the camps, or to their camps, within their borders. To the sons of Aaron, of the families of the Kohathites, for the lot was theirs first, to them they gave Hebron and the land of Judah, with its pasture lands all around it. 
but the fields of the city and its villages they gave to Caleb the son of Jephunneh. To the sons of Aaron, they gave the following cities of uh, refuge, Hebron, Libna, also with its pasture lands, Jatir, Eshtemoa, with its pasture lands, Kilin, with its pasture lands, Debir, with its pasture lands, Ashan, with its pasture lands, and Beth Shemesh, with its pasture lands. From the tribe of Benjamin, Geba, with its pasture lands, El Alameth, with its pasture lands, Anathoth, with its pasture lands, all their cities throughout their families were thirteen cities. Now, to the rest of the sons of Kohath were given by lot, from the family of the tribe, uh, from the half-tribe, the half-tribe of Manasseh, ten cities. And to the sons of Gershom, according to their families, were given from the tribe of Issachar and from the tribe of Asher, the tribe of, Ma- of Naphtali and the tribe of Manasseh, thirteen cities in Bashan. To the sons of Merari were given by a lot, according to their families, from the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Gad, the tribe of Zebulun, twelve cities. So the sons of Israel gave to the Levites the cities and their pasture lands. They also gave by lot from the tribe of the sons of Judah, the tribe of the sons of of Simeon, the tribe of the sons of Benjamin, the tribe, rather, these cities which are mentioned here by name. Now, some of the families of the sons of Kohath had cities uh, of their had cities of their territory from the tribe of Ephraim, and they gave to them the following cities of refuge. Shechem, with its pasture lands, in the hill country of Ephraim, and Gezer, with its pasture lands, Jokmium, with its pasture lands, Beth Horon, with its pasture lands, Aijalon, with its pasture lands, and Gath Ramon, with its pasture lands, and from the half tribe of Manasseh, Anair, with its pasture lands, and Biliam, with its pasture lands, for the uh, family of the rest of the sons of Kohath. To the sons of Gershom were given, from the family of the half tribe of Manasseh, Golan in Bashan, with its pasture lands, and Ashtaroth with its pasture lands, from the tribe of Issachar, Kadesh with its pasture lands, Dibarath, rather, Dabarath with its pasture lands, and Ramoth with its pasture lands, Anem with its pasture lands, and from the tribe of Asher, Mashal with its pasture lands, Abdon with its pasture lands, Hukok with its pasture lands, and Rahab with its pasture lands, from the tribe of Naphtali, Kadesh and Galilee with its pasture lands, Haman with its pasture lands, and Kiriathaim with its pasture lands. To the sons of Merari, the rest of the Levites, were given from the tribe of Zebulun, Ramona with its pasture lands, Tabor with its pasture lands, and beyond the Jordan, Jericho, on the east side of the Jordan, were given them from the tribe of Reuben, Bezer in the wilderness with its pasture lands, uh, Jahaz with its pasture lands, Kedemoth with its pasture lands, Maphoth with its pasture lands, and from the tribe of Gad, uh, Ramoth and Gilead with its pasture lands, Mahanaim with its pasture lands, Heshbon with its pasture lands, and Jazer with its pasture lands. Let's move on now to Hebrews chapter 10. The author of Hebrews continues For the law. Since it has only a shadow of the things to come, and not the very form of the things, can never, by the same sacrifices which they continually offer year by year, make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, they would have, rather, they would not have ceased to be offered, because the worshippers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have consciousness of sins. In those sacrifices, there is a a reminder of sins year by year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and the blood of goats to take away sins. Therefore, when he comes into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the scroll of the book it is written of me, to do your will, O God. After saying above, sacrifices and offerings, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you have not desired, nor have you taken pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law, then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will. He takes away the first, the first covenant, in order to establish the second. By this, rather by this will, 
we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands daily ministering and offering time after time the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But he, having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, sat down, we talked about this yesterday, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies are put as a footstool for his feet. For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. That's the already and not yet of our sanctification process, where in the heavenly places and the heavenly realms where we're seen as already sanctified with God, yet we're still stuck in this temporal realm, battling our day-by-day struggles with our own sins. Continuing on, verse 15, and the Holy Spirit also testifies to us Uh, For after saying, and this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days go, rather after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their heart. And on their mind, I will write them. He then says, and I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these things, there is no longer any offering of sin. Remember to whom this is being written. This is being written to uh, Jews who are currently struggling because they're afraid of persecution. Well, not just Jews. These are Christians who were Jews, right? Who were born and raised up as Jews, but now they're Christians and they're considering throwing away their commitment to Christ because of the persecution which has risen against them. This is their struggle. So, the point being made is, look, in Jesus the Christ, your forgiveness of sins is completed. It doesn't exist anymore. Maybe I said that wrong. No, I said that right. We're good. Your sins are as if they never existed to begin with. Why? Because they were hidden with Christ when he was sacrificed for you on the cross. That's it. That's the end of the story. You can't perfect yourself by being more obedient to the law now than you were before because of some understanding that, oh, well, now that I'm a Christian, I have the Holy Spirit dwelling within me. Now I can better fulfill the law of God. You could never fulfill it to begin with. This is what Paul has been saying throughout all of his letters whenever the Judaizers would come. He would stop them and say, no. Understand, if you put yourself under that law, you exist only by that law. You are rejecting the covenant of Christ. You are rejecting the work of Christ, and you're placing yourself back under that law. You who want to be perfect by keeping the Sabbath, even today, dear Christian, You're putting yourself back under that law. You who think that you can only worship God through only singing the Psalms. We we don't see that shown in scripture. But if you want to take your Christianity and make it better, make it a stronger, better Christianity, well, how are you doing this? You're just throwing more law on top of it. And this is exactly what was happening In this day, people were terrified of the the punishment from the Jews. The Jews were blocking them from uh, even going into the temple at all. Because they were banned from the temple because they called on the name of Christ. They were being blocked from their families. Their families were utterly rejecting them. The same way that when a, a, a Mormon today comes to Christ and repents of their previous sin, and trust in Christ alone for their salvation, they are immediately cut off from their friends and family, and in many cases, their jobs. They lose everything. They have to start over from scratch. But they have Christ. And they realize that's all they need. This is the struggle that these Hebrew Christians were enduring. They were losing everything for the sake of Christ. They were considering uh, forsaking Jesus 
just to say that, oh no, don't worry about it. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm I'm a real, you know, I'm I'm a good solid Jew again. So they wouldn't be persecuted by their own people, by their church and by their families. So the author of Hebrews here is, is writing to them to remind them of what they have in Christ. We have the better and more perfect high priest who never has to offer any sacrifices for his own sins. And he's done it once for us, for us all. And now we're redeemed in Christ. We're in that already, but not yet sanctification process. If I was to die today, it doesn't matter what I've been doing or how hard I've been, uh, rather, it, it doesn't matter, it matters what you're doing, but it doesn't matter how hard I'm uh, pursuing the perfection of what we have, so long as my complete devotion is only to Jesus the Christ who took my place on the cross. That's it. That's the entire story. And this is what's happening to these Christians. They're being persecuted for the name of Christ. And they're terrified. And so the author of Hebrews is now writing to them, reminding them of all the promises that are already fulfilled. The promises of the entire Old Covenant have been fulfilled. They have their, their, their complete consummation in Jesus the Christ. They have been completely taken care of by him. So why would you go back to that? There's, there's no salvation in the law. There's only condemnation. Continuing in verse 19, he continues, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, not by our own works, but by Jesus' blood, which is the better sacrifice, and by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, we pass through that flesh to enter into the Holy of Holies. And since we have a, a great high priest over the house of God, all of these things are fulfilled in Jesus. Let us draw near with a sincere heart and in full assurance of faith. This is that full weight of trusting in our faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience in the same way that he brought up before. How the people and the book and the tabernacle were sprinkled with blood. We have been sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Just fail on our own. Verse 24, and let us consider how to, how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. For if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, well, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy by the mouth of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as defiled the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the spirit of grace. He's talking now about people who are willing to dump it all, to just go right back to Judaism. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. 
Remember the former days when, after being enlightened, you endured a great conflict of sufferings, partly by being made a public spectacle through reproaches and afflictions, and partly by becoming sharers with those who were so treated. For you also showed sympathy to the prisoners and accepted with joy the seizure of your possessions, knowing that you have for yourselves a better and lasting possession. Therefore, do not throw away that confidence of yours, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance. So that, for the purpose of, when you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet, in a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. Tomorrow, he's going to go through what we call the hall of faith. This reminder that it's not from simple obedience that we are saved. Because this is what the Jews continue to say. You are only saved through works. You're only saved through obedience. That's it. Obey, 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 obey. And if you don't obey perfectly, according to the Jewish method, then you are to be cast into hell forever. Or the Sadducees who believe that when you die, it's just like atheists turning off a light. But there's no point to anything. But we have this hall of faith we're going to go into tomorrow that talks about the facts that every Christian who we have in history even uh, all of these people that are shown here are Jews starts off with, with Abraham and it builds up from actually no it starts off with Adam And it builds up from there all of the people who have done what is necessary by faith. They believe that God is real. They believe that he is who he declares himself to be. They trusted in that and they live their lives in in, in reflection of that truth. Does this change how you live your life? Yeah. If God isn't real, you can go live your life however you want. You can be like those people who, you know, who I've known, who go racing into church so they can sit down next to their wife after a, a raucous night of drinking, hoping that their wife can't smell the woman that they were with that night before. But they get their Jesus card punched. They go home feeling like they're justified before God. If you believe God is real, if you really believe that he is who he says he is, that he's the grand creator of the universe, the one who spoke and the entire universe leapt into existence just by the command of his mouth, That all things that were created, the entire universe, was created for his purposes, to his glory, including you, dear Christian. That every moment that we draw breath is simply at the whim of God. If you believe these things to be true, then your life, like the life of Abel and Enoch, of Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Moses. You're going to live your life in a way that reflects that truth. You're going to live your life in faith. That's how Old Testament people were saved. They, they trusted in the fact that there was a promised deliverer to come. 
we today have that promised deliverer given to us. We're right, we're right now reading through the book that tells about who he is and how we should live our lives in light of this fact. This is what it means to walk in faith. And tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to go through a, a long section of text, 40 verses, that remind us of all of the people who in the past endured much for the sake of the name of Yahweh. Let's move on now to Amos chapter 4. Hear this word, you cows of Bashan, who are on the mountain of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, and who say to their husbands, uh, Bring now that we may drink. Lord Yahweh has sworn by his holiness that the behold, the days are coming upon you, and they will take you away with meat hooks, and the last of you with fish hooks. And you will go out through breaches in the walls, even uh, one straight before her, and you will be cast to Harmon, declares Yahweh. Enter Bethel and transgress. In Gilgal, multiply transgression. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days, and offer a thank offering also from that which is leavened, and call for free will offerings, and cause them to be heard about. For so you love to do, you sons of Israel, declares Lord Yahweh. He's mocking them for their worthless um, sacrifices, for worshiping the host of heaven and everything else, and then they still come to God, and they act like God is paying attention. But I gave you also cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and lack of bread in all your places. Yet you have not returned to me, declares Yahweh. He's saying, look, I took away the things that you worshipped. You still didn't come back. And I also withheld the rain from you, while there were still three months until harvest. Then I would send rain on one city, and on another city I would not send rain on one portion would be rained on, while the other portion not rained on. It would dry up. So two or three cities would wander around to another city to drink water, but they would not be satisfied. Yet you have not returned to me, declares Yahweh. Showing sometimes you go through hardship and struggle. Maybe that's God reaching out to you. I struck you with scorching wind and milled you, and the gnawing locust was devouring your many gardens and vineyards, fig trees and olive trees. Yet you have not returned to me, declares Yahweh. I sent a pestilence among you after the manner of Egypt. I killed your choice men by the sword along with your captured horses. I made the stench of your camp rise up even in your nostrils. Yet you have not returned to me, declares Yahweh. I overthrew you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and yet you were like a firebrand delivered from a blaze. Yet you have not returned to me, declares Yahweh. Therefore, thus I will do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. For behold, he who forms mountains and creates the wind and declares to man what are his thoughts, who makes dawn into gloom and treads on the high places of the, of the earth, Yahweh, God of hosts, is his name. As we read Hebrews, it's a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of God. Let's conclude today with the end of the book of Psalms. Praise Yah. Praise Yahweh from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, heaven of heavens. 
in the waters that are above the heavens. Let them praise the name of Yahweh, for he commanded and they were created. He caused them to stand forever and ever. He gave a statute and it will never pass away. Praise Yahweh from the earth, sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind doing his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged bird, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all the judges of the earth, both choice men as well as virgins, the young with the old. Let them praise the mighty name of Yahweh, for his name alone is set on high. His splendor is above heaven and earth. And he has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his holy ones, for the sons of Israel, a people near to him. Praise Yah. Psalm 149. Praise Yah. Sing to Yahweh a new song. His praise in the assembly of the holy ones. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the sons of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing. With tambourine and lyre, let them sing praises to him. For Yahweh takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the afflicted ones with salvation. Let the holy ones exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the exaltations of God be in their throats and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their honored men with fetters of iron, execute on them the judgment written. This is the majesty of all his holy ones. Praise Yah. Psalm 150. Praise Yah. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to the abundance of his greatness. Praise him with trumpet blast. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and pipe. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise Yah. Praise Yah. That's all for today. That's all the reading and all the notes. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.